everybody. We have finally made it to the last two letters of the Hebrew alphabet. We're going to talk about Shin and Tav today. And we've made it to the last two verses of Proverbs 31. We are down to Proverbs 31, 30 and 31. So if you haven't been following us or if you need a refresher, this is an acrostic poem of the Hebrew alphabet. So every verse between Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. Sorry, I keep looking to the side. That's where my Bible is. But all of those verses begin or start with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And it's in, it's in order from A to Z or in Hebrew from Aleph to Tav. And so we have gone through all of the verses and we're down to the last two. So let's start by reading them real quick. Um, verse 30. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Give her the product of her hands and let her works be praised in the city gates. And those are um, verse 30 and 31, and I'm reading from the NASB version of the Bible. So I wanted to let you know that Proverbs 30, 30 begins with the letter ta, um, Shin, I'm sorry, Shin, and um. Let me read to you a little bit of what it means. So Shin, as all the other letters, have um, an image that it holds. And Shin has really two images that it's most popular with. Um, the first one is the two front teeth, right? So if we can <laughs> see my teeth, you know, it kind of has that W look to it. But it also represents fire. And it could re represent the, the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God. And God is often represented as fire. Uh, the thinking behind it or, or what that imagery holds is destruction. Because if you think about when you chew on something, your food, you're, you're basically destroying it and breaking it down. Um, and fire definitely has a destructive aspect. But in contrast, because um, Hebrew thinking always looks at it frontwards, backwards, upside down, inside out. Um, it could also equal the refining fires, right? So a, a silversmith or a goldsmith's fire that would burn away impurities, um, you know, kind of just destroying the things that would keep something from being pure. Uh, so it symbolizes refinement as well. And honestly, if you think about the, the job of the Holy Spirit, um, it is a refining fire in our lives, right? It is, it's the Holy Spirit's job to teach and rebuke and to, to train us. And so those are qualities and actions of the refining fire. So I also wanted to read from uh, page 194 um, to give you just some more information on what this verse holds. But Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, begins with a statement that really sets the theme of the whole book of Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and that's in Proverbs 1 7. The book then details the lessons, warnings, and the importance of wisdom. The theme is finalized in Proverbs 31 as encouragement for us to be strong women whose foremost priority, and remember that's Rosh or Resh, is to understand that the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. Um, and this Proverbs 31 excels. Her husband, her bridegroom, stands and acknowledges her worth and sacrifices. The last detail he admires is her priority of yoking herself to God and drawing wisdom from him. Her last mentioned quality points back to the first and the most important quality of Proverbs, and it's a full cycle. So we started by saying the fear of the Lord, and now we're acknowledging that the Proverbs 31 woman acts, moves, does her thing because of her fear of the Lord. It's a full cycle, which again, that's a pattern of God over and over and over again within the Bible. So um, I wanted to leave you with that so that you understand, um, you know, how transforming that cycle is. It's we're constantly burning away um, the old and burning away the sin and transforming us and letting us um, shine with the qualities that um, our creator has put in us. And, um, you know, it's, it's that opportunity of redemption cycle over and over again. Uh, so the Hebrew word Shakir, which is um, on page 202, we'll take a look at that real quick. And, and we're going to break down the verse a little bit. Um, but the Hebrew word secure is um, 
it means a lie or a sham or deceit. And so it's it's the word that's been translated as charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. And so, you know, we're looking at charm and, and it's good to understand that word of charm is, um, let me read this to you. So the picture graph that forms this word, deceit, uh, contains an image revealing destruction at the back of the head. Like who's got your back? Is it someone who is going to stand up for you and defend you? Or is it someone that's going to uh, lead you into destruction? So, um, you know, the back of the head. Uh, have you ever experienced someone talking about you behind your back? Right. It's kind of the same thinking and idea. We've got that deceit. So so some of us have um, put charm as what we want to look for or beauty as what we want to put our eyes on. But really, um, you know, what's the motivation behind us is something to consider. Um, I, I added a Chinese proverb. I know this isn't biblical, but there's a Chinese proverb that says a lie has no legs and cannot stand, but it has wings that can fly far and wide. Few things destroy like deceit. And so, you know, again, what is the Proverbs 31 woman allowing into her home? And what is the motivation of the Proverbs 30 woman, 31 woman? What is she yoking herself to? Where is she planting herself? What is she taste testing? You know, we want to think about all the lessons that we've learned throughout this chapter. So, it's interesting to think of, you know, what, what is it we're putting as our priority? Is it the charm and beauty? Um, and that could extend to having a beautiful, charming home and being a beautiful, charming hostess, all of that. Or is it based on a fear of the Lord and wanting to um, please our, our father instead of the world? Uh, so I thought that was an interesting thing. There is, um, Tet is also, and this is something to think about, Tet is a letter of contrast, right? It begins words like crush, but it also is, is contained, you know, in the idea of peace. Uh, the word sin and the word repentance, right? They, they are based on the letter Tet. It's definitely um, contrasts. And so um, I also wanted to put in the Hebrew word for fear, which is Yare, and, you know, kind of ask you, what does that fear of the Lord look like in your life today? Um, you know, what what is it that you fear? Are you more worried about the, the, you know, pleasing the people of this world or pleasing a family member or pleasing others versus pleasing our father? So, you know, just kind of think about that. Um, it, it, it's how, how well do you fear him. And it's not a fear of, I'm afraid that if I don't act and live a certain way, I'm going to be disciplined, you know, the blessings and the curses, but it's a fear of reverence and a fear of, I love him so much. I don't want to break his heart, right? We can understand that fear of the Lord, you know, or I want, I want to, 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 I want so badly to please him and live in a way that is um, glorifying him versus making his name not so great, right? Because of my actions or behaviors. So it's that responsibility that we have when we go into relationship and covenant with our father, but also our husbands, because this is the context of, um, you know, a marriage. So it's important to understand that context. And so, um, you know, I, I put in a, a story of a woman who, whose husband did, um, have an affair and actually it went south quickly. I mean, there were evenings that he never came home. Right. And, um, you know, the world is so quick to say, dump them, leave them. And sometimes, you know, sometimes we need to because of abuse or, or, or drugs or, you know, there needs to be some kind of separation in that situation, but she wanted to fight. She wanted to transform and refine the relationship that she had with her father and between her husband, that she wanted that refined relationship. And so she battled it the best way she could through prayer. She even blessed his um, anointed, his pillow and prayed over his pillow every night so that when he was sleeping, he did not have a restful sleep, but he was dealing with, uh, with God on a, on the daily and on the nightly. And so, um, her story does come to a better ending that there's their marriage was ultimately saved and sadly it doesn't always come out that way, 
but father in heaven honored her prayers and honored the dedication and she went through it it's not that this was an easy i'll just pray and my life will be better i mean she was on the verge of bags were packed and i'm leaving tonight and and that night was the night that god chose to restore her marriage and so there's hope and it's there is there is god's perfect timing and god's perfect plan so i hope that shin is one that you can um, appreciate um, because it is so important to uh, honor honor the Lord above all else and, and worry about how we honor him versus how our life looks to those on the outside um, of our family. Um, the next one is Tav and it's 3131. And I just wanted to look over anything else. Oh, I wanted to say before I go on to the next one that this verse, um, Shin, Proverbs 31, 30, a lot of people think that it goes back to the scribe's point of view. And so, you know, this isn't just the husband. I think I might have mentioned this in the last, that there's a few verses that the scribe kind of inserts instead of just being words from Bathsheba to her son, that perhaps the scribe um, inserted these words because um, it's important to know the final lesson of it or the final opinion of it or any insight that the father may have given to the scribe as he was putting these words down. And so, um, you know, we're looking at the point of view um, because it probably wouldn't be a good compliment for a husband or to say of his wife, um, you know, your, your beauty is going to fade, right? That wouldn't get him any points. Um, and so, but it is complimentary to just finally acknowledge that, the, you know, you, you, your beauty may fade. However, you are a woman of the, of the Lord who, who honors and fears the Lord. So that's just kind of a fun uh, little side note that I kind of discovered in the research, but uh, there, so definitely going full circle and acknowledging that she has yoked herself to the father and she has yoked herself to Yeshua the strength of his yoke is not a burden. So we're going to go on to Tav, and Tav is a short chapter. Um, and so today we'll have a very short lesson, so enjoy that. Um, but Tav is, um, it has the pictograph of a mark or a cross, kind of like X marks the spot. Um, and so it's really asking what kind of mark the Proverbs 31 woman will leave on this world, the legacy, what legacy is she's going to leave. Um, I'll read a little bit from pages 211 and 212 so we kind of understand the mark. Um, let's see. Okay. So Mark is identified, um, there, marks are used in the Bible all the time. You know, the first biblical use of sign or mark is in Genesis 114. Um, when he hung the lights in the sky to be a sign or a mark for the seasons, days, and years, and to mark the boundaries. There are others noted. Um, you know, Cain received a mark when he sinned. Uh, the Israelites marked their doors um, with the blood of the Passover lamb. Ezekiel um, identifies foreheads who have groaned over sin. They were marked and they were spared judgment. And then Revelation um, Revelation 7 and 8 and also 22, God's name will mark the forehead. God will mark the names of, of his name on the foreheads of his bondservants. And so um, there's lots of references to mark as a sign, right? This is a sign to identify something so that people can point back to and remember something. Um, so also, um, Tav often represents the word, the truth, the idea of truth. It's a mark of truth. And so this is interesting. It's on page 212 if you guys have the book. But if you look at the word Amet, right? And it's spelled um, Aleph Mem Tav. That's the word truth. But if you were to, to space out and just list out the whole, all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph is first. Mem lands right dead in the middle, and Tav is the last word. And so think about how God's word is contain, contains truth, right? It, it's identified and marked with truth. And it just think it's, I don't think it's a coincidence of where those letters fall in the Hebrew alphabet that is used to write all of his truth. Um, I think it's kind of fun to consider that. Uh, also, on page 12, 
um, I have a really interesting, um, just kind of a play on words that our father designed as he wrote um, the verses. And, and this all represents, and if you want to look this up, it's Psalm 119, 160, where it says your word is truth. So this is something else. Um, so the earliest form of a signature was to make some type of mark of ownership. And even today, some sign their names with an X, right? They sign, it's an X, mark, make your mark, make your X. And that's how people would that are illiterate would make their name, write their name. This is Tav. That's what Tav is. It's an X or a cross. Um, did you know that God signed his masterpiece of creation? Genesis 2, 3 reveal, reveals a divine um, word and letter play. There's a play. It describes God's final actions of creation. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which god had created and made so the last three words of this verse in hebrew read um from left to right and when if you again if you look at those last words and i encourage you to go look them up in a blue uh blue letter bible online or you can find those phrases in hebrew somewhere so read them from right to left and you'll see, you might recognize the final letter in each word. So the first letter, the first word ends with Aleph. The next letter ends with Mem. And the next word or the next word ends with Atav. And so Amet, it's again the word Amet, Aleph Mem Tav, which is the word truth. So God breathed out and spoke all of creation. And the last phrase bestowing the completion of creation encompasses truth and so he left his mark he signed his name his signature on all of creation um, after and then he rested and so it gives us an understanding of um psalm 119 60 and it says the sum of your word is truth so it all boils down to this is truth and i'm signing my name i'm mark making my mark i'm putting my x on this um last statement so uh and it definitely helps us understand too, you know, the idea of covenant because it would all be written down, right? And then a copy would be given to the vassal and the copy would be given to the suzerain in our case. And um, they were signed. And we also immediately know that it was signed in the blood of, of Yeshua. So even from the beginning, we have the ideas of covenant and we have the ideas of making our mark. We have the ideas of what will be standing, the ideas of truth, everything that we read from now on in, in the word is truth. And so we've got God's signature on it to make that mark. So again, um, it talks about in this passage about how her name will be praised at the city gates. And again, we have that word Hallel. And we've talked about Hallel and how it's that, la, 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 you know, that sound is where it comes from. And it's it's a sound of praise and celebration. And it's um, so much so that you almost sound like a madman. And that's where, you know, that sound, making that sound kind of makes you sound like, you know, such a crazy celebration of things. Um, but it is a name. It's the word Hallel again. And then um, the hand, the works of her hand, let the works of her hand be praised at the city gates. That word is yud, and so again, we need to understand that that's a, 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 you know, yud is the right hand, and it means strength and ownership, and so, you know, she's being praised again for her strength, and she's being praised for her authority and her ownership of what she's done, and, and it shouldn't be missed, let it be praised at the city gates. Um, again, the city gates represents the place of life. It, it was the most active part of the city. All the commerce was done there. All the judgment was done there. And her husband um, is seated at the city gates with the elders. And so it's just showing like she has that deserving authority as well. And people are talking about her at the city gates, at the places of life. And so, you know, where are our city gates? Um, it's interesting, too. It doesn't matter if um, it, it's... Uh, our door right or the door of our house or the the gates of the city because that could kind of be translated in either way it's our place of authority and where our life is spent so it doesn't matter if it's in the home tending to our family taking care of our children having the authority of raising them and setting the tone of our home or if we're working women 
at the city gates, right? At the business and place of commerce. It doesn't matter because we do have the authority to, um, to, to be praised. We have the rights and the authority to be praised and to be welcomed and to be accepted and to be acknowledged. And here's something else too. This is the third time that the word Hallel is used in this passage. And again, number three is a number of completion. So, um, you know, it's a final time. It's complete and whole and, you know, looked at in, 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 comparison to all that she does we have to acknowledge the front and the back full cycle right we have to look at the full cycle of a life so that we can understand that that praise and where it's from so i thought that that was important and i just want to leave you you know with the question of what is the mark that you would like to leave as your legacy what is you know what is it that you're going to put your name to what mark what x are you leaving on your family and on your ministry, and on your life, and on, you know, when people look back at you, what are the, what are you going to be marked and known for? Um, and, and are people going to recognize the signature of God across your, your creation of life that you've made, and what he's made for you, and what he's done for you? So something to con consider and to think about. Um, I didn't have a story of anyone in this one, because I wanted everyone to just really understand you know, the truth of Proverbs 31 and to understand that you are women of strength. And when God sings over you, whether it's the beginning of your life or the end of your life, he is singing over you, Ishit Chayil, right? He is saying you are a woman of strength and you are known and praised at the city gates. And so I hope this study has been encouraging from you, for you. Um, the only favor I ask is if you've enjoyed it and read it, please leave a review on Amazon. Those are always beneficial and helpful for any author. I encourage you to do that for any books that you read um, to leave a review because they're so important in the life of an author. Um, let me know. You guys can reach out to me through band or through Facebook or any of that. Um, any comments or questions that you guys have had throughout this study. Um, you know, I love to hear from folks and um, spread the word, you know, share this with other people. I always encounter women who have struggled in their identity or struggled in thinking that they're failed in life as mothers or wives or daughters or, you know, ladies who have just not fully embraced how honorable it is to be a woman of God and how much our father redeems our stories, right? He's the author and perfecter. I, I actually posted something today, the same God that um, allowed the scribes to call Rahab a prostitute is the same God that lists her as the mother's, um, you know, the mother of Jesus, right? The, 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 it, it within the line and gene genealogy of Jesus. And so, don't let that fail you. That's that's our God. That's our God who um, speaks over us. And so embrace this song of strength and embrace this heroic hymn. And I hope it's been a blessing. Thank you for joining me.